Hi everyone, Kent Larsen here from Smart House Electric. We're back with part two on how to connect a buck booster. This is something that's very intimidating at first to many, is to see all these wires here. And um, so, so let me try and demystify all this stuff here. So really what we have here is four windings inside of this block here h1 to h2 and h3 to h4 those are known as shunt windings a shunt winding is something that is created to create a magnetic field it is not supposed to work for you in a way well it is working but that's not where you're pulling your load out of uh, for the tanning bed or for the appliance that you're using it for so pretty much across the, the board i mean all the connections that it's used in in tanning to create our voltages we always connect h2 and h3 in order to serial connect those two um uh, shunt windings um so let's look at the wiring here so all these wires inside here are always tagged with like a uh, a name on them here we got h2 here and we got x4 so all of them have um some some kind of tag and particularly and this is a little guy here um the h wires that you see here uh, in the booster they're pretty much the same size and even in a giant booster and the reason for that is that again those are not supposed to pull uh, any major current they're just shunt windings. They are just there to create that magnetic field that's going to give us that last bit of lift on the voltage to um, to add to uh, to get to the voltage that we want from uh, from our service to drive our tan uh, tanning bed uh, correctly. So let's look at uh, ways to wire this together. So already we know H two to H three. So we gotta find H2 and we gotta find H3. And so in that case, these two guys here will always go together. That's it. Maybe not an ideal wire nut for this, but um, I don't really like these little yellow guys here it's for lamps and stuff, but um, there's these guys here too. Um, just have in mind though, <clears throat> this is my opinion, just personal opinion. I'll say anytime you get over 50 amps worth of, of uh, current load, uh, start to think about shifting away from wire nuts and into something like a, a split bolt, uh, something that, that screws down hard. Um, I, I fixed a lot of connections in regards to blue wire nuts. Um, they have a tendency of backing out. These wires actually move every time you start up the tanning bed. There will be a small vibration uh, happening and that can back out the wire nut and eventually it will burn out. And so, and that kind of mess can uh, cause some, some, uh, some damage to your electronics and, and that sort of thing. And, it, it can cause a, a real ripple effect through your through your equipment. We got up here is it line voltage from panel service. Uh, so let's say that it's a commercial building. 280 volt AC is available from your service. Then let's say we are doing a single phase uh, load, and no worries, I will get. I by the end of uh, this video. I will get to uh, three phase and what to do about that. So uh, just have patience with this one here. The same theory goes for single phase. Y you just have to do a couple of more things for three phase, but I'll get back to that. No worries. And so, um, so we got L1 and L2 here, some connecting points. And then we got uh, our appliance back here, wanting L1 and L2 in a boosted format. Let's say 224. So first we want to create um, our magnetic field. And that's H1 
and it's H4. So we are connected here between H2 and H3. And now we got 208 across our uh, shot windings, our magnetizing um, uh, winding. And so out on, on each one of these here, we'll be getting 16 volts now because of the mag magnetism uh, induced into here and that those windings are connected on the same um, uh, metal, if you will, on the same core as it's called. And uh, it will give up 16 volts each. So it's how you connect these now. So let's see here. So the H1 here, we're gonna connect that all the way we're not going to boost that we're just going to connect that straight to the source so basically you wire from the service it's just going to go in and just kind of give h1 which is a little wire a, a, some power and then you're going to go all the way across over and uh, just go straight into the um, to the appliance let's get to the boosting part here then so we have energized our magnetic field and then from there now we want to boost and so to boost with 16 volts or with the low setting we're going to parallel Our two 16 volt outputs here. Now we can pull from X2 and X4 to our appliance a boosted voltage and we feed X1 and X3 um, from, a, from our service, our 208. Um, and can add the uh, the now 16 volts on top of that. So that's how it works for 16. Let me show you uh, how we boost with 32. And again, for a 12, 24 volt um, booster, this will be the tab that will boost with 24. So L1 and L2 we got 208 coming in we want to get 240 volt out this time l1 l2 again we're connecting h2 and h3 this time here we want to serial connect 16 volt ac and 16 volt ac in order to create 32 volts worth of uh, worth of boost so here we have to serial connect as well on this side. So X2 and X3 is going to be connected together. And so the same thing as last. We're going to energize our shunt windings L2 and then all the way over to L2 here. So it's not going to be boosted. And then we got our L1 energizing our shunt winding so we had 208 across here we now want to boost it and then let's draw it in on x1 here and now this is in series so 16 volts here plus 16 volts here gives 32 and that gives us 32 volts out and this, the interesting thing, this is for boosting what I'm showing you here, which is the most commonly used for commercial, but in a house you would have 240 volts. So you would wanna know uh, how you can lower the voltage. That is simply by reversing this diagram. And so instead of having the load connected on this side of this schematic, you will put the, the, your uh, line voltage, the supplying voltage from your panel or your uh, disconnect 
or whatever the case might be that your power is coming from and um, and putting it in this way so your L1 will be connected to X, X4 and uh, your L2 will still go through and just kind of energize the um, the shunt windings so um, that's pretty nice and simple and let's go back to the 1632 Oh, the six is uh, a 16 volt boost and it's the same thing you put your lines here instead of and then you load up here instead in order to lower the voltage three phase application and so um, here you just add another booster um, you don't need three boosters you could do that and do uh, um, um, a boost on each leg, but it's that's not really a advantageous way to do it. Um, just use two boosters for a three-phase application. So we're going to add a leg here for a service, and one on our appliance down here. And so basically, we're just going to be doing the same thing that we had been doing on L1. And we're gonna do the same thing on L3 now. So L2 is still just gonna be the shunt winding cross voltage that we're gonna provide. And that's gonna go to our H1 on the other booster. So the same leg our l2 that's going to go straight to our appliance um it's going to be providing your h1 on the other booster and then you're going to be uh boosting l3 uh just as well as you boosted l1 and for the ones is not sure of how advantageous it is for the three phase let me crunch the math uh for you uh, as you saw in the previous video, uh, in part one, we came out with about 50 amps on from our ETL listing given 11,200 watts that the appliance is consuming. And you can find that on that sticker called the ETL or UL listing. And for Europeans, it will be the CE um, listing. So 11,200 watts divided now by 385 and as we knew uh, from before the single phase load would come up to 50 amps on 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 this 11,200 watts our three phase load is only 29 amps so we get a pretty nice reduction in how much current has been pulled on the wire